I'm Sue Roxburgh from SI Stourbridge and District and I'm here to introduce Paige Hill, our candidate from a partner organisation, the Girl Guides. She's from the first Witchbury Senior Section Guides and she also attends Old Swinford Hospital School and she's going to talk about are women and girls valued in our world. So, my name's Paige Hill and as you've heard I'm a member of Girl Guides first Witchbury Senior Section. We're a all-female organisation working to encourage and support girls and women around the world. But the question remains, are girls and women valued? Gender stereotypes are based on not on any inherent or natural gender differences, but on so, uh, standards and norms that society has created for us. They're forced on us from the moment we are born. The pretty pink dresses that, girls, that parents put their baby girls in and the blue clothing that parents put their baby boys in the Barbies that little girls play with, and the action men that boys play with. The norms and standards, but why are they there? If we take a scenario, we see someone riding a motorcycle. We assume, without looking closely, that they are male. We're engaging in stereotyping. We're saying that women are too timid or weak to ride a motorcycle, but that's not the case. Why are we creating these feminine and masculine roles that men can assume some feminine roles and women can assume some masculine roles. But why are they called masculine and feminine roles? Why? There's just no point for it. Women can do men the same as men and, women, and vice versa. Male roles are usually around aggression, strength and dominance and women's are nurturing, subordinate and passive. But what says that men can't be nurturing, subordinate and passive and women aggressive, strong and dominant? Killing, aborted, neglected. 100 million girls are disappearing. Now, this is due to birth rates and women wanting girls over the boys. So imagine you're one half of a young couple in a poor country. You're part of the new class. Your income is rising, you want a small family, you get pregnant. You have an ultrasound scan, it costs $12 but you can afford it. You find out it's a girl. You prefer a boy, your whole family clamours for a boy. But why? Perhaps hard physical labour is still needed for the family to make their living. Perhaps a, w a female is got to go away on marriage to another family and want, you want someone to look after you in your old age. Perhaps you need a dowry. Perhaps only men or males can inherit land. So what do you do? You'd never dream of killing a baby boy, a baby girl even, when you're like they do in the country. But abortion seems different. For millions of couples, the answer is abort the girl and try for a boy. But isn't this just saying that a baby girl isn't wanted, isn't needed, isn't valued in our world because we are female. And that's just wrong. For every 120 boys that are being born, only 100 girls are being born. And this means that when the lopsided generation reaches maturity, the crime rates, sexual violence and suicide rates will increase. So, are girls valued? In sport, Women and men are playing at the same rate, and in 30% of sports, there is a pay difference. In prize money, there is a 30% chance that there'll be more. In sports such as the Football World Cup and the Golf US Open. There's also an increase in pay. A female, in America, a female athlete playing basketball may earn $87,000 minimum. But the minimum for a male basketball player of the same level is $20 million. How is that fair? How can women be valued playing at the same level as men, yet their pay is so much different? There is an example of a 12-year-old girl who was banned from playing soccer because the men on the team might think impure thoughts about her. But why is this? Why can't she be valued for playing the sport rather than being a girl. Thank you for listening.